Hi, this is a quick video to go through Stride and Swift. So it's an alternative to a for loop. So this will print i using a for loop. So it prints between 0 and 9. We can do something similar in stride, using stride. So we're going to print the original 0 to 9, and then 0 to 10. Now if we want to avoid using 10, then we can use the alternative stride. zero to ten instead of through that Americanism. So we're expecting a third count. So this went from zero to ten and this one is from zero to nine, making this one equivalent to that for loop. To make something equivalent to this for loop, sorry, to this stride, we can just change our for loop to run from 0 to 10. Now they're exactly equivalent, but you might want to use stride because you can use negative numbers. I'll just comment these because it gets confusing with so much written to the console. For i in stride, so we'll go from 10 to 0. And if we want to count down, we're able to do that. Let's run. So we're going to go from 10 through 0, taking one away each time. That looks good. And you can also use stride to use numbers larger, well, or smaller than 1. So if we do, do 10 through 0 by minus 2, we're expecting it to go down by two steps each time incredibly useful and stops you having to think of mods and things like that. So there you go, 10, 8, 6. So and this one was from 10 taking away one each time since it was through zero, include zero. Now, there's one last special trick that stride can do, which for loops can't. We can go from zero through 10 by non-integer numbers. So what would happen if we did 1.9? So we'd go up by 1.9 each time, starting at zero. There you go. And you don't have to start exactly at zero. What happened if we started at 1.9? Well, we just wouldn't have the zero and the other numbers would be the same. But it gives you a certain flexibility that for loops don't offer. So it's quite an interesting tool you can use for things like leak code problems.